I am going to talk to you about brain electrical oscillation signature profiling. This is indeed a technology wise, a new name given to it. In fact, when we developed this technology, we had with us Dr. One, Dr. M. S. Rao from the Forensic Science Department from the Ministry, and I had given him a number of names for the new technology that we wanted to use. I mean, that we could use, and it was his selection that we should use brain electrical oscillation signature profiling as the name for the whole technology. Uh, I'm happy to, I'm very thankful to him because after that, it has been very useful to have this particular terminology and it meant the essence of the technology as well as all over the world, people now from a, as a new technology, of course, I would should, should say that along with Dr. M. S. Rao, the, the one more person that is Dr. Vyas, J. M. Vyas, who was the director. Without his help, we couldn't have done that. In fact, when we took up the project, it was a, as a research project, we took it up. The project was supported by ICMR in India and NIAAA from USA. Both these people funded us the, for the project. And in um, in the, the DFS, and there was Dr. Dr. Waya, who is also who has come for the program now. Who was also the member, the main member from the institute, from the DFS side, who, I mean, took part in the project. I should say that. Of course, there is a reason for that. We have been working in NEMANS on electrophysiology for several years. From the 80s, we started, and by 90s, we were doing almost. 10 to 15 cases every week, every head injury case and every alcoholism case were, was seen by these, by the test that we had developed, the, not the brain electrical oscillation, but normal P300 and other even related, other even related potentials used to be recorded in them. And we had recorded almost uh, around 1,000 subjects in that way, the two groups of subjects and including some normals. It was a huge amount of data that we collected, but that is when I found that I have to develop something different for a purpose like forensic purpose, wherein a person is trying to hide some information and give something else to you, the investigator and then how to get that type of, I mean, get to into his mind and then try to get something more meaningful without he trying to give any oral commitment on that. And that is how even in a P, when you do P300 and et cetera, we ask them to give a response, either a physical response or oral response. Yes, no, it could be just Simply, it could be the same. It could be just pressing two keys, but the response from the subject is necessary. And I found that we shouldn't have any response at all for the new technique that we developed. So we, in the new technique, in the brain electrical oscillations, there is no response selected from the subject at all. The interpretation of the EEG is done by the system and then it gives the report and it has to be only in, I mean, you cannot ma manually in interpret the re results. It is not possible because there are many reasons. 
let me come to the new technique itself. I mean, when you look at it, extracting presence of exper experience, initial knowledge, directly from the brain, you find that the whole thing has a very different type of a presentation. Now, when you look at it, you find that there have been dozens and dozens of cases, newspaper reports of cases that have been solved in DFS, that is Gandhinagar DFS, wherein the case was virtually solved by them by using the BIOS test. And there are so many of the cases, 10 years later, 11 years later, just the other day there was a case, 11 years later, the case was solved. I mean, could find, they find a solution for the case by using BIOS. And because BIOS is never to be used as an investigative evidence in the court. It's not for, for that purpose. But BIOS gives information to the investigator to go further and investigate and find out in evidences that could be present, that is presentable within the court, acceptable within the court, that type of. So BIOS is essentially for helping or using the investigators. <coughs> now we're coming to what actually is the test. There are several dozens of cases I have, even the newspaper reports I have dozen. They, I mean, almost every state in India sends for some one of their cases once in a while to DFS Gandhinagar so that the case will, can be given BIOS test and then a solution is found. Now here also we call it brain mapping. What is actually brain mapping? Detection of presence of deception in reports. Detection of presence of recognition of familiarity. That is mainly done by the P300. So it is not just the recognition of a familiarity that is being recognized by the system. It is an experience the subject has had, which he doesn't speak about. And that has to reflect that experience has to make an effect on the EEG and that must we should be able to find out that. <clears throat> And detection of presence of remembrance. That means this is very important that the person you make the subject remember the past. And when he tries to remember the past, he is not going to tell you if you ask him the, the suspect whether he had done something, whether he did this or he did that, he is going to say no. He is going to try to clean himself out of any type of involvement. So what we decided is that we will not ask him to and give any answer at all. He has to only hear. He has to quietly sit and listen to the probes that are presented. And not only that, and the probes are to be presented in the auditory manner, small sentences are presented, and the duration that is used for analysis is much, much higher. See, for example, we use 10 seconds in the place of P300, where we use only one second <coughs> of data and analyze that one second to find out the P300. We call it a P300 because it occurs at 300 milliseconds. Here, our the probes itself would be auditorily presented, not really visually presented, auditorily presented, maybe for two or three seconds. And then we look for the changes that occurs in the brain. And then for the next 10 seconds, you find that there are many types of changes that we have found. Some of them I'll be describing here. And these changes are to be picked up and it is not based on just one parameter. It is based on several parameters, presence of several parameters that we can make a type of a inference. Now, <coughs> there are two types of knowledges in this. One is remembrance of one's own past. 
once another one could be he may not have any experience he might have just known about something he would have heard from somewhere he would have read in the book he would have read somewhere so there may be an experience of reading but what is read he has not experienced he has that is when you call it a knowledge pure mental knowledge whereas when the person has really gone through an experience that is what we call remembrance remembrance of the past so here the test is for establishing the reality contacts using sensory motor system <coughs> remembrance or recreation of mental imageries or subjective experience of making reality contacts emotional effects all this becomes part of experimentation now when you say experience what are what are these experiences living through suffering be subjected to a particular type of in action by another person participating in an act certain occurrence in life acquiring knowledge through participation doing something and acquiring knowledge <coughs> or acquiring knowledge through through practice come into contact with that undergo something or encounter it's all happening in life all these are the basic i mean points at which an experience occurs in a person so he has to remember this experience if you can make him remember this experience what is the type of changes that you will find in eeg <coughs> now this provides actually a scientific basis of the memory systems of the individual now when you say retrieval you find that retrieval from memory there are two basic two major things one is recall from knowledge base that means you have read something you have learned something that way and you re remember you have the knowledge of it you can sit and speak about a formula you can speak about a theory you can speak about that but you haven't done anything in that particular area whereas when you remember from autobiographic memory you call it remembering remembering is the you know you recreate the memory imageries of the experience you are carried out you have had a sensory motor experience with a certain event in life and that is why you call it a remembrance it is not just knowing no a person who may have known something but may not have had any experience at all where a person <laughs> who have had experience may know very little about it, the theoretical aspect of it but he would have had experience <coughs> so these two are to be differentiated essentially so when you say knowing recognizing using retrieved information matching external model with internal models and grams whereas remembering means autobiographic episodes recreation of sensory motor imageries and emotional effects in the individual the person must be able to recreate that only then you say you are remembering that now there are two dual memory systems was suggested by it was by mandla in 1980 that you knowing using retrieval information that is one type were in the matching external models with internal models for recognition of objects persons entities condition changes ideas meaning all this can be recognized not that the person has had any experience with that the second one remembrance of experience so this was in 199 i mean as i told you once again 1980 it was mandler who proposed this as a theoretical model in neuroscience or in psychology 
<coughs> remembrance of experience. Memory of experiences occurred during participation in acts. Remembrance of autobiographical episodes in life may be cured by words or stimulus referring to it. It could be by showing something, it could be referring to it, verbally referring to it, the person remembers something from the past. <clears throat> now, again, a lot of work was done by Moscovich in 1992 and 94. Occurrence of remembrance disease mandatory and automatic when cured by a stimulus. So remembrance is normally mandatory when there is a, if remembrance subsides, it's difficult for a person to remember. That is when you say that he is slowly becoming demented. Dementia is a disease wherein it affects the remembrance of the past. The person forgets to remember. Otherwise, occurrence or remembrance is mandatory. And that's the word he himself used, Moscovich at that time, it is mandatory and automatic when cured by a stimulus. So you find that here, the things that you need is, one is sensory registration of the cues, recognition or semantic interpretation of the cue, and accessing source memory. <coughs> How and when it happened, time and place where something could have happened. Recreation of sensory motor imageries within the brain. The neural binding effects that gives rise to. Then the last one, attending to remembered events and experiencing experiences. These are, these are the different stages of remembrance. And you find that there are different types of reasons for inhibition of this. I mean, when you look at the brain, you find that the orbital frontal and anterior cingulate cortices and basotemporal cortex have under their direct control various other areas of the brain. See, this is one thing that we have to understand. Not that <coughs> brain functions independently, different areas working function independently. No, the whole brain functions are under the control of orbital frontal area, anterior cingulate area, and part of the basotemporal cortex. They have under their control various types of con control, other areas of the brain. The controlling system and the control system, inhibitory facilities, optimum functioning of a controlled functional system. There is a need for inhibition and withdrawal of the inhibition of the control system. And this is done by the controlling system. <coughs> the functional efficiency of a system could be increased or decreased depending on the needs adjudged by the controlling centers. The controlling centers decides this is the efficiency of the control system by withdrawing or enhancing the inhibitory control of the system. Damage to the controlling centers and the connecting tracks would release the control centers from inhibition. When you think of experience, remembering the experience, these are the things that occurs. And now again, coming to the inhibitory control that the frontal lobe uses, you find that the orbital frontal and basotemporal cortices <coughs> have controlling effect on the dorsal temporal and parietal areas. It has through other system, medial dorsal frontal lobe, the medial dorsal frontal lobe, motor inhibition. <coughs> These two areas will control the paralimbic areas or stimulate. There's a large complex within the brain, network within the brain, where there are controlling set centers and control centers. Brain electrical oscillation signature profiling, reading from memory. A test, this is actually a test for measuring 
remembrance of experience. I must say that even though I use my name, I had a team of people working with me. <coughs> there was a lot of contribution from DFS, the people from the regarding the cases, it's in the forensic aspects of cases. And I had support from, as I told you, Dr. M.S. Rawl and Dr. Vyas, and then support from computer people, because we developed a computer system, the technology only for this, because of their support. <coughs> so it was a team which worked on, who worked on brain signature profiling. Now, in simply in simple terms, when you say recognition, knowing, remember, you see a picture and you say he is John. Oh, this is fire. John is a neighbor. This is a knife. This is a ship. Two plus four is equal to six. See, these are all bases of knowledge. Whereas when you say remembrance, you say that, oh, I saw John on MG Road. I saw him yesterday. He was with his wife. He was with Sally. He was with his wife. But they were shopping. So I'm remembering what they were doing. <laughs> All you say that I use this knife. I use this. Friends, to the remember thing, that is when you call it a remembrance. Acknowledging, knowledge, knowing that this is so. So and so, this is this, this is this, that's all. But when you say this is my, I have used this earlier, you, there is a reference to time and space. So knowing and remembering are very different, say, cognitive process. Brain, animal brain resources. In the secondary association area may be utilized during recognition. Very minimal brain resources may be used, may be utilized as only minimal information may be required for recognition or prediction. Areas involved in is mainly dorsal lateral prefrontal cortex, other than the The dorsal lateral prefrontal area and the anterior cingulate, what you call here, this one. These are two areas very largely involved in remembrance of experiences. These two areas are activated during remembrance. So just because he's the person is remembering, you cannot, you, you can find out that remembrance occurring even by an fMRI or other imaging technique, but that's not good enough within the court to say and as an evidence, to use it as an evidence that he has done this particular act. That is where the relationship has to be established between the person and fMRI. Prefrontal cortex itself is very large in that mainly the anti the lateral area is involved. And then for remembrance. <coughs> During remembrance, there is extensive activation of anterior cortex. Optical areas. Electrophysiologically, you will find changes. Looking at those changes. Experience. <coughs> Send. 
perception, there are emotions, and then there is finally the awareness of the whole thing occurring. All these are part of remembrance. You find that there is, during remembrance, there is a recreation of sensory image. Recreation of proprioceptive responses, recreation of original emotions, recall of awareness of transcoded details. This is when the person remembers. And only when he, the person remembers, you can say that he has had this experience. <coughs> so the purpose of the whole test, the test is to decide whether he has had such remembrance from which we can conclude that he must have had an experience, related experience. Now, if you think that he has had, had a related experience, now it is left to the investigators to go and prove that he has been to that particular place, he has met these so and so few people, because the, the person himself would have refused any knowledge of any of these things. He, would, he wouldn't even say that he has visited that place. He had done anything there. So he comes out of the whole thing denying that he had done anything like that. Now you find that he has had an experience of doing some of this. But this alone is not enough considered as an evidence. Using this evidence to prove that he has really met so and so, something happened between them. And this, that is when you find that even the person finally accepts that, yes, this is what happened. <coughs> How does BIOS profiling identify the remembrance of specific experience? So we spent several years actually working on experience understanding experience, studying experience. I mean, I remember met number of philosophers, number of scientists, other, I mean, collected information from all of them, how people think, what experiences. And to come to a final scientific conclusion, it was not an easy job at all. We are tested based on the assumption that a participant alone has the experiential knowledge of participating in the specific act. <coughs> All those who are, uh, had experiential knowledge would have one way or other participated in the act or part of the act. A witness of an act has experience of only witnessing the act, not participating in it. A witness has only experience of witness, witnessing it. Knowing about the act is not the same as experiencing. <coughs> now what we do is that, as I told you that, we don't present just words or we don't present any symbolic things but visually as you record in the case of P300, etc. Here you present short sentences. A sentence, only thing is that a sentence should not be more than three or four seconds. Three or four seconds can be maximum a sentence could be. The statement is called, this statement is called a probe. So you have to sit and then think of the different possibilities that could have happened. And based on that, <laughs> the investigator has to make a set of probes. Maybe one set of probes may say that this type of an action would have taken place, whereas another set of probes may say that another type of action was actually that took place. So you can try different sets of probes. The probes cue the recall of the autobiographic episodes or experience that the person has acquired. <coughs> See, it goes like this. I was informed of the meeting. I was told that the meeting would be in Indonesia. I was called for the meeting. 
I have left for Indonesia a day before the meeting, or I arrived at the Palam airport. It, it just goes on like this. Everything is described in first sentence. And all that the subject would do, or many a time the subject doesn't do, we record the probes and the probe is presented through a computer. Is it presented through a computer rather than a person sitting and reading? <coughs> because when a person sits and reads, <clears throat> there could be tonal changes, there could be changes in the presentation, etc. That shouldn't occur. So the presentation is done without any type of emotional effect, which can be done only if you record it on a computer and then somebody examines the whole thing and approves, yes, this is the way we should present it. So if I have to record it and I find that there are some of the proofs that are not presented properly, my friend or another person could sit and point out, see, these are not No, neuropsychological principles of probe design. No probe with a value judgment or direct emotional provocation is to be used. So yet very particular, you don't make any value judgment or any direct emotional provocation is subject, subject, subject is, the person is subjected to any of these while presenting the probes. <laughs> of course, the recording takes a longer place because you have to sit and interview the subject, you need a room, and then another place is needed for the subject to uh, for the subject to sit and the equipments are kept in an adjacent room so that he doesn't see the equipment being and run over his own EEG, etc. He doesn't have a look at it. He only sits and listens to the probes. <coughs> and at the end, you tell him then, at the end, I want you to remember all the probes that were presented to you. That's very important. He somehow feels that probably that remembrance is more important for him. Because that is what they are trying to say, find out many a time, in many cases, the subject would feel that way. That he has to somehow remember so that at the end of it, he can repeat it correctly. So he would sit and only listen to the probes. And with an interval, I'll come to that. And we are trying for data. I wouldn't go into the details of this. Found that we will do it with a 30 32 channel system rather than a 64 channel system. <coughs> of course, a lot of recording is the, a lot of analysis is the, <coughs> it takes time. And number of electrodes more means that itself causes certain type of discomfort to many subjects. So that type of discomfort should not be there. And this is the way it looks like that. He just sits. You may also present something visually in the beginning so that you know you have an idea of, of what is a visual imagery, how the visual imagery changes occur. Now, this is the system, the earlier system. Now it is, um, the computers are not big like this. I mean, you find that there is one computer for presenting the data. I mean, the probes, another computer for only recording EEG and through the system. And then the EEG machine is the adjust side by side, which will record the EEG. You need more number of channels. Quite an important thing is that no number of and um, um, computer systems, etc., is needed. A more complex and very uh, 
different type of computers, specialized type of computers are needed for this. Now, when you look at the EEG, this is the regular EEG that you find that every vertical line is one second. So you find this is the normal EEG of then, as I told you, the first red signal you find here, <coughs> the red line, that's where the probe <coughs> begins. Three seconds are used as a baseline. Three first, first three seconds are used as baseline. The next three seconds for presentation of the probes, and then again another remaining time is used for about seven seconds are used for analysis. See, this is the way it would look like. The probe is presented somewhere here and there are changes taking place. Yeah. And not in one second, it has occurred in one second, two seconds, three seconds. For three seconds, the changes are occurred. Now, what are these changes we have to look for? This is where you find that enormous amount of computer analysis and signal analysis is necessary for this. It is not just looking at a particular P2 present, no. The pattern of electrical activation representing remembrance may be different for different sensory motor activities. Now, what are these different activities that we look for? Not, as I told you again, it's not just one variable and its amplitude or latency that is measured. But we look at sensory registration, we look at encoding, the semantic processing, we look at the changes for internalization of attention, <coughs> then <coughs> accessing of memory, Sensory motor imageries, presence of sensory motor imageries, remembrance taking place, emotional responses, if it is there, there are changes, familiarity or excitement, activation, suppression, the different types of changes are the related to all these functions and all these are measured afterwards in the EEG. And when you look at it, you may find a change like this over certain period. It may be for three seconds, four seconds, five seconds. In some people, it may be for a shorter period. <coughs> Not that uh, all people will produce the same type of the second. No, it can be, it can be smaller, it could be bigger. <coughs> <coughs> Now coming to level of this thing, remembrance seen within BIOS, sensory registration at two plus two level, semantic processing at different level, accessing source memory, shifting attention inward, neural binding, the same thing I told you, I have put in a different manner. Now, the whole analysis is automatized. The subject, the investigator doesn't sit and analyze anything. The whole thing is analyzed automatically by the BIOS system. So I, I wouldn't say that I am the one who sat and developed that analysis and all that. That's why I told you that it's a team that worked on the whole BIOS system. There were computers, computer engineers, software engineers who developed the, I mean, analysis program, but then interacted with us. And finally, definitely the way I want it was all developed. Response to each probe is analyzed and interpreted by the CBOS system. The system interprets the data also. The subject does the investigator, the person who does the recording does not interpret. That is also done by the system itself. All major statistical analysis related to signal processing are carried out at 0 0.01 level of significance, because this contains a lot of statistical analysis. And we had at that time, a lot of ideas, 
whether we should use it at 0 0.05 and also 0 0.01. Then finally, we found that 0 0.01 level, we will take it. And it is still going on at 0 0.01 level. <coughs> This is the way it would look like. On the left side, you find the probes written, printed out by the system. And this is the analysis. This is the analysis of 10 seconds of EEG. This is the 10 seconds of EEG. Each line represents one second, 10 seconds. And this is an analyzed EEG. I cannot, I don't want to get into the detail because speaking about that takes. This itself will take about one or two hours. So we may not go into that. But the analysis program is very extensive and very complex. And this, afterwards, it can produce dozens of maps like this. And at the end of it, the system prints out the report. That's also very important. If the printed out report that is given to the court, <coughs> you don't sit and write anything. The whole report is printed out. When there is room me ek sadhu jadu se experiential knowledge, he remembers the experience. That means he has had experiential knowledge. There were changes that represented sensory activity, sensory imageries which presented that he is actually seeing, that again seeing, that remembering that particular object, there, and the system would say there is experiential knowledge. <coughs> so the experiential knowledge is returned by the computer. And the subjects, the investigators, they can sit and interpret this experiential knowledge, either its presence or absence. That is all they can do. Okay. This is the way the report is printed. And these are the different functions that are tested in this encoding, present accessing source memory, attending, attention, internalized, synchronized activity, time domain response, etc. Now well, finally, you see the total number of EKs across across in all scenarios, total number of EKs in sequence in each scenario. And we have also decided when we did the study, we found out the sensitivity and specificity. <coughs> and we found that the sensitivity is 95%, whereas specificity of the system is 94%. False positivity was 5%, false negativity was 6%. <coughs> Anything above 90% is accept uh, highly acceptable. So let me stop here. I am sure that there may be many questions from your side. I would be happy to answer those questions. <coughs>